Hi there, James Sykes, CEO of Metal Energy, here to share some additional insight and input into the news release that we put out last week with three exciting drill holes that had absolutely amazing intercepts of nickel mineralization at Manabridge, proving that this is a system that continues to grow and it'll continue to grow as we progress exploration on this project. There's so much to uncover here. There, there's so much to do. And so let's just get right into it right now. So what are we trying to do at Merge anyway, uh, at Manabridge? Well, we definitely want to, inf we, we want to define an initial mineral resource. There has never been a historic mineral resource done on anything outside of the old mine workings. So knowing that we've got at least a kilometer strike length of mineralization with mineralization going down to as deep as 800 meters. And in the areas that we're seeing now with mineralization as, as thick as 80 meters, we know this is a big system and we think we can we can definitely put a good uh, mineral resource to it. Mineralization does start at at least 100 meters beneath the surface and in a couple of the areas. So our target is we want to see something that's greater than 15 million tons at greater than 0.6% nickel. And we think that is highly achievable here at Manabridge. Every Everything that we've seen so far really indicates that, that those should should be minimums. What, how long is it going to take and what's it going to cost? Well, we think we can do all of this in about two-year plan. 50,000 meters, I think that's even an overestimate. But we are permitted for 90,000 meters over the next two years. So there's there's no issues on that. And to complete a 50,000 meter drill program, or however many drill programs, and programs it would take, based on our previous drill program, that would cost us less than $20 million. So it's not a big investment to to get to a large resource. That's what's that's one of the things that's really key about this. Long-term goal, we do believe that Manabridge can and should go back into production, especially with the demand that will continue to soar for nickel and higher price regimes. We think that this this really looks like a prospective project to go back into production. Obviously, what's the time frame on that? It's, it's pretty well difficult to tell, but we would like to see it done within this decade. So there's a lot of push that has to go on. But if all if all the stars align, we can we can definitely do this. And another key point about Manabridge, it's in Manitoba. The infrastructure is already there. This is not a discovery that that is in the middle of nowhere that you have to build all the infrastructure to. This is in the Thompson Nickel Belt, which is a mining friendly jurisdiction. They've had over 60 years of mining, nickel mining history here. The road's right by the project. The rail's right by the project. We've got power line coming through, coming through the project. Workforce is within the area. There's a lot going on in this neck of the woods in Manitoba. So this is this is the perfect location, really, to advance a nickel project. And I, I've said this many times. Mineralization is everywhere. Uh, all of our drill holes have demonstrated 100% drill intersection success. And again, that's over a thousand meter strike length, 800 meter dip direction. There's a lot of nickel, nickel here, and it remains open in all directions. 25 out of 27 drill holes have all intersected greater than 1% nickel over variable widths. So that, that's continuous. Your, your greater than 1% nickel is continuous, and it's consistent. And our drill hole spacing has been pretty wide, I must say, 30 to 50 meters. And that's the kind of drill spacing that we would need to get to that NI-43-101 resource. You're going to look at, uh, so I guess the best way to really compare the results that we have is to look at the old mine workings. And based on the old mine workings, anywhere from greater, greater than 30 to greater than 40 GT should be considered good for an underground mining potential. And that's based on the historic mining. And you can see some of the, some of the historic mining results there, where 2% over 15 meters, 30 GT down to uh, just, just over 1% nickel over 65 meters, 72 GT. So between that, anything greater than 30 GT should be considered as, as lucrative for underground mining at Manabridge. What's GT? Grade thickness. So the grade multiplied by the thickness of the intercept gives your GT. If we look at some of the, the composite results that we've released of the lower lens, so I'm just we have an upper lens and a lower lens, and we're going to focus on this lower lens just for this part. But what we're showing here is anything greater than 25 GT, just uh, slightly bit lower, but you can see some of those GTs there. Hole 31 is a 55 GT. Hole 30 has a 49 GT. Hole 29 has a 39, uh, 39 GT. These are big results. These are comparable to the old mine workings, and they're shallow. Anywhere from starting near 150 meters down to 200, 300 meters, right in the same same ballpark. And we still have... We still have nine 
uh, assays pending from nine other drill holes. Very exciting. We're, we're, we're anticipating some great results coming out of there. Uh, I'll quickly point out, especially for the astute investor, you might think that some of these results look different uh, simply because in this, what I'm showing right here is just the nickel percent over the lower lens, not the nickel equivalent. So I've removed copper and cobalt simply to make this comparison comparable with the old mine workings, which are only nickel values as well. So we're comparing apples to apples here. So the red dots indicate these drill holes of interest that have over 25 GT. Yellow have less than 25 GT, but there's a number of those that are very encouraging. You can see the strike length of the mineralization shell here over a thousand meters, and it does get down to 800 meters. There's a lot of gaps in this drilling, especially, well, there's a lot of gaps historically in the drilling. And that's why we think this whole system can just grow. And you can see where the assays are pending as well with the, with the gray dots on here. So I'm going to focus on a couple of cross sections, section seven north first, and then we'll jump over to section five north. And so those are 350 and 450 meters away from the old mine workings, respectively. So they're, they're, they are quite a distance away. And I'll point out here, this one whole drill hole here, hole three, which was drilled in the winter of last year. Yes, it's less than 25 GT, but we think that it can be greater than 25 GT. So we get into this right now. You can see the, the outline of mineralization. There's the upper lens. We won't touch on that right now. And then the lower lens. The lower lens on section seven north is about 150 meters uh, down dip, uh, along the down dip, uh, the down dip direction. And it, it varies from 50 meters at its thinnest to great to about 75 meters at, at its thickest. It's open in both up dip and down dip directions. You can see some of the GTs here, hole 28A, 33 GT is the highest up. And it does kind of pinch out where we do see the thinnest mineralization at around hole 25. But then it starts picking up again. We're getting in hole 24, 22 GT, and then right at the very bottom there, hole 3, 21 GT. But if you look at that cross section, there are two black circles there. There's no assay data that was never sampled. There was no XRF done. There was never any sampling done there. So we think that there is mineralization still hiding in there that we will go back and resample and hopefully we'll see that that grow. But what, what that would really do is that now you start building up that GT and it also improves your depth potential as well. Very exciting stuff. And then when we hop over to the next section, section five, and this is the these are the results that we released on Monday of last week. Everything just grows exponentially. So our our down dip direction is now 180 meters, but our width has has significantly grown. We're now at 60 meters up to 80 meters in thickness. You look at some of those GTs there, starting from the top hole four, which has a 44 GT. But again, look at that cross section, the two the two circles there. There's no assay data. There's none in the upper lens, and there's a big gap of no assay data where there was no XRF done, no sampling done. So we feel comfortable we can go back there and fill in that gap because we do believe that there is mineralization in there and that would increase the GT of that as well. You continue down here, hole 31, 55, hole 30, basically a 50 GT, hole 29, a 39 GT. These are big. And then you can even see there's historic nickel mineralization that leaves this whole system wide open, both at the upper lens and at the lower lens. So this is just a system that will continue to grow and expand. So those are the two sections that we looked at. The next news release that we will put out as soon as we get the assays back is going to be this section six north. So it's in between both of those. And you can tell based on, on sections five and seven that you can anticipate some good results already. And then we'll also put out holes or the, the drill holes from sections three and four. As, as we do get closer to the old nickel mineralization, we are expecting to see some some very encouraging results out of these drill holes for sure. Visually, they looked they looked quite compelling. I'm also going to point out three of the three of the drill holes that were drilled in 2008. So one of the previous operators, but if you look on the very top there, hole 0801, 0.94 over 40.75 meters, very close to surface within uh, definitely shallower than 200 meters. It's a 38 GT. That's a big intercept. And then closer to the old mine workings, hole 0804, 0.86 over 35 meters. That's a 30 GT. So we know that that, that 30 GT will continue towards the old mine workings. And then even hole two on the, the far right hand side there, over 1% over five meters. But we think that has also been undersampled. We actually think that all three of those holes are all undersampled. So that's going to add to um, 
to a program, to our next drill program. We're going to do some resampling on some of these historic drill holes. Before we before I sign off on this, take uh, get a load of this. Okay, here's here's the envelope of nickel mineralization that was mined at Manabridge back in the late 70s. 150 meters wide zone. Okay. And I've been showing comparable results based on GTs. And if, if you just move that box over, boom, you've got another section here that is looking comparable to the old mine workings based on the GTs. That's encouraging. Then the big question is, what's going on in here? You've got another 250 meters with, with barely any drill hole results. And even more compelling, what's going on down here? Because everything is open at depth. And in a lot of cases, we see that mineralization is actually getting stronger, broader, higher grade as we go towards the depth on all of these sections that we have drilled. A lot of potential down here in this white zone. And you can even see that that where we have been drilling in that gap, uh, that, that small little gap in, in the outline, it's filled with nickel. So we know that this system, we know that this model has a lot of room to grow. And I'll just point this out for the astute investor because you you probably saw that yellow dot there. I'm like, oh, what's going on in there? That's not greater than 25 GT. That's hole five. Okay, it's got a 6.4 GT. That was never sampled properly. There's a lot of, there was never XRF and never assaying done on a lot of that drill hole. So that's going to be part of a resampling project. And we do believe we can get that, that drill hole, uh, more nickel in that drill hole. So that's part of upcoming programs that we have planned for in the future. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Metal Energy is part of the org group of companies, a very successful group of companies with a lot of talent and a knack for making discoveries. American Eagle Gold made a huge copper gold discovery late last year, and it continues to grow. Baseload Energy, very similar, made a uranium discovery in 2021, continues to grow. Drill hole, drill program, pending for baseload. So keep your eyes on that. QC Copper and Gold has a massive, massive copper gold resource in Quebec. And that's a that's definitely something you should keep your eyes on. If you enjoy some of these presentations, again, go to YouTube, check out our YouTube videos. We have a lot of educational videos on there that can help you understand not just the commodities at play, but also, also the thinking behind a lot of these companies and, and how we operate. Thank you very much for your time. If you, if you ever want to get a hold of us, you can contact me directly, jsykes at orgroup.com.ca. Uh, you can also contact the, the company directly, info at metalenergy.ca. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. You know, tell your friends. Get people excited about nickel. Get people excited about metal energy and Manabridge. Thank you very much for your time.